just 370,000 years after the universe began in a Big Bang, all that existed was a hot plasma similar to a candle flame. Protons and electrons, seen as the red and green balls, were bouncing around, scattering the light. The particles of light, called photons, shown in blue, couldn't go far without colliding with an electron. As the universe cooled, the protons and electrons could pair up, forming hydrogen atoms, and the light was free to travel. It's been traveling freely ever since, through the dark ages before there were stars, then past the formation of the first stars. As the universe expanded, photons lost energy, changing color. They went past clusters of galaxies. The path of the photon is slightly bent by the gravity of the clusters. Now and then, going through a cluster, an electron, that green ball, would collide with some of the photons. They would change their path past more matter, more little wiggles due to gravity and mass. The photons traveled for 13.8 billion years before they reached the Planck detectors and died a glorious death, giving up the information that they had gleaned passing through the entire universe to our instruments and enabling us to make this beautiful map of the universe. The Planck mission was designed to measure the cosmic microwave background better than it's ever been measured before. It sees light from stars, from star-forming regions and galaxies. It sees light from electrons in the Milky Way. We can remove that light from the image. It sees radio emission from the Milky Way. We take that light out. It sees light from dust in the Milky Way. We can remove that light. When we take all of those other sources of light away, we're left with the cosmic microwave background itself, the oldest light in the universe, traveling towards us for 13.8 billion years and showing us the universe in its infancy.